All right, everyone, this is something you haven't seen in a while on my channel. Good old Abe's Epoxy Sculpt. I got it out because the joints here were pretty horrible. And I used it and smoothed it and put it in there. Remember, Abe's is a two-part epoxy putty. That's why that says part B. There's some that's mixed. You mix equal parts up and then you can smooth it with water i can see i'm going to have to come back and hit this again in a few spots because it's not perfect but it's not doing too bad i'm going to let it cure before i do to strengthen those joints because those two pieces right there they were hard to glue on they want to move the glue isn't holding really well that aves when it cures they're not moving so that's part of it it's an epoxy putty it is epoxy just like two-part five-minute epoxy it cures up almost equally hard and is strong so I'll be back at this one a little bit to do some sanding the silver paint treatment see if I've got them straight once I got them straight I just built some brass guns to go there and there and this thing starts seeing primer I have to fix the base too but I came up with a solution for fixing the base okay you can see it right here it is not pretty the rod is wobbly. So what we're going to do is I want to take one of these things, draw out a hole the size of this, feed that over it, and then glue that down there on the base. So it is going to hold it in place very well. I'm going to use some epoxy to glue that brass rod on there with because it has to be pretty strong because this thing is heavy. And I have to have a rod that tall up because that bottom fin is huge I mean this is a really awkward kind of design to be honest with you well I'm gonna set this back over here and let her cure overnight I won't touch that again till tomorrow and I'll be back later all right everyone this is the silver paint method for checking seams to see how they're doing I just smear silver paint all over the place and I can see a few spots that need a teeny bit more work mainly in the front back there's just a one spot on the front right there and the back just a teeny bit more once that's done yeah like right there you can see the silver paint showing me i got a bad spot there but once that's done i'm going to lightly sand this silver paint off and this is ready for primer and that is a well no i gotta make the guns she still has no weapons Okay, once she gets her weapons, then we are ready for primer. And I will be happy because painting on this one should go fast. It's a two color, dark green and light green coat, and then it's decals, and she's done. So, this one will be happiness when it's done. I gotta fix the base too, because that brass rod right there is way too wobbly. All right, everyone, Brock Yuri Cruiser time. Um, what I'm working on is fish finishing the seams off across the top i found a couple issues it's not focusing again i'm having so much fun with this camera let's try something there we go i'm working the seam lines across the top here okay and i found a micro bubble right down there you can see it if you look it's underneath my thumb below my thumb there's a black spot so I got to fill in that micro bubble once I get those seams done I can hit this thing with primer what I'm working using for the seams is I'm using some Mr. Surfacer 500 and just going to paint it around the outside of the seams to try to remove what little bits left paint that on a little bit of light sanding that should do it then this thing will be ready for its guns I can scratch build some brass guns Back in a little while. Okay, I've been working on the Brock Erie Cruiser. Trying to get this one done. You know, one of the shelf queens that just needs to get taken care of. It's came apart right here. And I don't want to torque it or too much because everything else is holding together really well. So what I did is I took some super glue. And you're looking at a bottle cap. I put super glue in a bottle cap and ran it around it with a toothpick. And then I twisted it a little bit to work the super glue down in there. I'm going to let that sit for three or four days before I touch it again. I want to let that cure up. All right, just letting you guys know where I'm at. All right, everyone. The Brock Cruiser is ready to get gunned. 
I'm going to get some uh, brass tubing sometime this week and replicate the guns and install them and these two positions here and then she's ready for primer I finally got all the seams done the part here that broke earlier the super glue trick worked it's already smoothed out everything smoothed out so she's ready for primer as soon as I get those guns on her this is a momentous achievement really truly it really is because this model is a pain in the rear <laughs> <laughs> No beeping necessary, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to say anything bad anymore. That was my New Year's resolution to quit that. Even keep track of it at work. All right, everyone, I am working on the Babylon 5 ship today. I lost one of the guns. That's why I have to make new ones. They were resin. And if you look at them, they just don't look good anyhow. So... I have a bag of brass bits and pieces. I might be able to just make it directly from that if I can find enough pieces that work. I got it at a Hobby Lobby, it was 20 bucks, but if you catch them on one of their 50% off hobby sales, this isn't very expensive. And this has its uses. And that's why I bought it. I knew I'd eventually use every last bit of it over the next like 15 years. <laughs> If I ever really start scratch building stuff, it'll get used up quicker. So I'm going to sit here and go through this and find the parts I need to build four, two of these. There's one on each side of the ship. And again, this is weak. This would take a lot of cleanup. And it's going to be less effort to build one. Now, I do have a way of cutting brass tubing. And I do have enough sizes of brass tubing over there under that pile of kits. I keep them under the kits to keep them flat. Oh, yeah, I see them. You can see them sticking out on the end. I got enough brass tubing over there that I could size this and cut it downstairs easily. Hmm. I'd just rather use these bits and pieces if I can. And I can see there's bits and pieces in here that are going to work. And this is a support rod. So I'm working on that today. <laughs> okay, here we have a chop saw. We're going to use this to cut some brass rods today. You know, little brass rods. I think that'll work. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's far too big for cutting uh, brass rods. And it is a Harbor Freight Tools miter saw, which means I'm going to catch some grief over that later from anyone who knows tools. <laughs> now, this one right here, this is for brass rods. Okay. And you can tell by looking at that blade, it's well used. Yeah, I can breathe a sigh of relief now. <laughs> <laughs> We're not cutting some, you know, that, no, that cuts fingers. That doesn't cut brass. <laughs> you try to cut brass with that, you're cutting fingers. That's wood. That's a wood miter saw. Okay, this, however, is for what we're doing. And I'm trying to find a place to do this with because we have automobile in here. And I don't want to move the automobile. Okay. And we have a workbench right there, yeah. That, that table was our dining room table when I was like two. Oh. Yeah, mom was going to throw it away and I kept it and it sits in the garage. I should strip the paint off and put a good coat of paint on it and refurbish it and probably sell it and make probably about a thousand bucks. I could just clear a spot here. What I usually do is just sit on the ground. You can do that. Being honest with you, I probably should not have opened that garage door. <laughs> Go ahead and push that button and close that garage door. Okay. Is it the uh, top? Yeah, yeah. Reason being is it is cold outside. And it was much warmer in here till we opened that. <laughs> and there we go. I'll get a power cord. We'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm cutting the small inner tubes first because their length doesn't matter. They just have to be straight since they're going to slide inside the other rods. Now, these rods are bent. There's a way of straightening them, but this end is not bent. So I'm going to cut some. Okay, here's the prototype I'm working off of. They have to be a certain length, but they can be longer. So I need to cut it about here. Now this little saw has a clamp on it for holding your work. And it's pretty much designed for what I'm using it for. Except for that quick notch won't work on it. There. Okay. That's a safety switch you have to push. You turn it on. Okay. 
that's it. Now, the end of it isn't perfect. It smashes it as it cuts, but it did cut it. And it takes almost nothing to cut something this small. Okay? It heats it up pretty bad, so watch your fingers. And I should be using safety glasses as I do this, being honest. quickly because it's not it's not big heavy brass if that makes any sense yeah so I got my two pieces right there for my inner rods now these outer ones they're gonna be the trick because I got to cut these to the proper size okay and what I should have here is a marking pen so I know where to cut them yeah and that's what I usually do is I come here with a marking pen and mark them. All right? Which yeah. I don't have out here at the moment. So these don't need to be the same size? No, they don't because they're going... They're going to be going inside so you can kind of... Right. They're going to be inside there like that. Them. Okay. So it's actually better if they're longer than they need to be. Okay. Okay? I don't care about the ends being flush on them either. Like this has a very sharp end on it where it was yeah. cut. I don't care about it because it's going to be inside this tube. Now the larger tube though you... Larger tube I'll have to clean up after I cut it and I've got to mark it for the proper length. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And you can see that it's okay. I'm also going to smash it a little bit to round the short tubes off. So I'm going to go get a marking pen real quick so I can mark this. I'll be back in a second. Okay. I took a pen and marked where it needs to be cut. Now when we come in here, put it in, I got the mark side up. Now, this is tricky, because I, you, come over to this side, you're not going to see it, unless you're on this side. This is tricky because you can see I'm going to have to adjust this. Like this. See how that lines up with the cut now? Yeah. And I have to be careful because I have to be, the mark has to be right on the edge. It's okay if I'm a little long, I can adjust that with a file. Alright. A little bit big, but I can follow that down to the proper size pretty right. easily. And I would rather have to follow it down a little bit than not have it big enough. Yep. I think our battery's going. Yeah, I know the battery's going. But you guys get the idea on how we're doing this, because some people are going to know how to cut some brass rods. And I'm just taking and eyeballing. I put it in the device. And I can come back and show you guys how to clean it up. I got the device just a little too tight for adjustments. But you guys can see what I'm doing there. And there you go. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Very nice. This makes it very easy to cut with. I got it at Harbor Freight Tools. I paid like $15 for it, 10 somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Watch for it to be on sale. When they're not on sale, they're like 35 or 40 Okay. But they put things on sale all the time. Now I got to cut two more. All right. I forgot I have to have four of each size tube because there's two guns on each side. Yeah. All right. David asks, what if I wasn't going to cut brass on this? First time I saw it, the first thing that came to mind is I'm cutting brass. Yeah. Okay. Now, to clean out inside here, I would take a drill, like that to me, a handy drill you saw, and drill some holes in there. Okay. And then take a knife blade and start cutting it. Because that's just flashing in there. Hopefully it's not as I'd... thick as this nub up here. Yeah. And this is delicate work right in there to clean up. Yeah. You're better off replacing that with brass. I know these things are not round. They're oval shaped. 
Hmm. And when I replace them with brass, they're going to be round, and they're it's going to be really hard to make them not look like brass. Being honest, yeah. But the brass is definitely going to look better than this will, because this is just not going to clean up nicely. No, it's too thick inside there. Yeah, it's way too thick. You'd have to sand it, and it's very delicate to keep that straight. They're going to be very fragile. This brass is not fragile. It's metal. Yeah. It's going to take punishment a lot better than this will. Definitely. Okay. And I can do some stuff to detail it up to kind of round that off. Yeah. So I can do some stuff there. Hmm.